Survival horror fans are eating good this month. It's been revealed that not just Resident Evil 4 is getting the remake treatment, but Silent Hill 2 as well. To be fair, the bigger surprise here is Silent Hill 2. We already knew about the Resident Evil 4 remake, and Konami has done fuck all with Silent Hill since 2012. A whole decade. This got me thinking, if something as cursed as Silent Hill can come out with a remake of one of its most beloved entries, then maybe there's hope for some other games as well. Here's my list of the top 5 games I hope to see remade. Number 5. Aki Engine Wrestling Games Okay, so we can definitely file this under the impossible category. Every Aki Engine Wrestling game that came out is licensed, meaning that in order to get them to come out with one, you'd have to go through a shit ton of red tape. WCW slash WWF is now the WWE, and their games are now only made by 2K, which in the best case, doesn't run like Aki Engine, and at the worst, it's a nightmare glitch fest. Def Jam Vendetta can't happen for obvious reasons, one of them being Def Jam talking about it, but not being about it. Ultimate Muscle hasn't been relevant since the anime came over here in the early aughts, so there's no reason to expect a game from them now. Right now, my only hope is that AEW game that I keep hearing about. It's been rumored to play like some of the older Aki Engine titles. AEW Fight Forever has a small amount of info and footage out there to chew on, and no word on a release date, but given what's been going on over there in the last few weeks, it's understandable. I appreciate it, Nick. I'm sorry if I'm a little fucking snippy. I'm hurt, and I'm old, and I'm fucking tired, and I work with fucking children. Number 4. Onimusha Speaking of licensing nightmares, remember that nice little Onimusha HD remaster we got years ago? You're probably thinking, where's 2 and 3? How come they aren't getting made? It's because of these fucks. You see, Onimusha 2 and 3 has playable characters modeled in the likenesses of two actors, so anytime you want to re-release those games, you have to renegotiate that shit each and every time. Unfortunately, in the case of Jubei here, his actor is super dead now, so Onimusha 2 is double fucked. At least with a remake of the whole series starting with the first game, you could get past the issues of the others and remove their likenesses. Capcom has been firing on all cylinders lately with their Resident Evil remakes, and Onimusha began as a pre-rendered action game with semi-tank controls, just like Resident Evil as well. Capcom could easily do great work with this one. Number 3. Parasite Eve Parasite Eve as a series is weird. The first one is an amazing take on a JRPG with a crazy sci-fi plot in a contemporary western setting with fun characters. Parasite Eve 2 gives you more of the same but the story and characters aren't as good. Seriously, that sister bullshit is weird and Kyle Madigan can fuck right off. Gripes aside, it's still an okay game. And then you get to the third birthday. <laughs> good fucking god. If you haven't heard about this one then consider yourself super lucky. So basically take away everything that made the first game great, the setting, the story, the characters, the combat, and turn up all the shit that made Parasite Eve 2 not as good as 1. Add more Kyle, add more sister bullshit, add more plot issues, strip away the combat, and then you have the third birthday. Oh yeah, and strip eyes closed while you're at it. Yeah, this game is notorious for how horny it is. Seriously, even if you overlook the clothing damage, you still have a slew of horny ass costumes for Aya to wear. I'm certainly no prude. I enjoy the female form as much as the next dude, but if I wanted to beat off to Aya Brea, I would hit up Pornhub or Tumblr. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm getting off topic. Look. Parasite Eve is a fun game, and it deserves better than what it got. If Front Mission and Sword of Mana can get some love, then so can Parasite Eve. Number 2, Mega Man Legends. Well, we are back in Capcom Town again, and this time we're looking at the Blue Bomber himself. Did you know that it's been four years since a new Mega Man game came out? Don't get me wrong, the legacy collections they have been pumping out have been amazing and greatly appreciated. I'm definitely looking forward to that Battle Network collection dropping next year, but a new Mega Man game would be fantastic, and what better way to do it than to remake Mega Man Legends? Now, I know what you're all thinking. Why 1 instead of 3? Well, simple. Legends 3 was a demo. Barely a demo at that. And it was for the 3DS. So I doubt much of that stuff, if any of it, is going to be even salvageable for a new game. It would make more sense for them to start from scratch for a remake from the ground up, starting from the first game. I feel like Legends could do well with some modern improvements, and if it eventually leads to 3 being made, even better. 
at the very least, make 2 not end on such a cliffhanger. Realistically, the only thing we're going to be getting at this point is probably a collection of 1 and 2 plus Tron Bond. Hell, I'll take anything at this point. All I ask is that they just put in dual analog controls. Number 1. Panzer Dragoon Saga If you ever went online and looked at a list of the rarest and most expensive video games ever, chances are you saw this game on that list and I would bet my life that it was in the top 5 somewhere. For years I have heard nothing but praise about this one, but alas, it remains a pipe dream for anyone wanting to play it in an affordable and easy fashion. The story of this game's cult status and scarcity is a long and winding one. I will try to summarize it in the best way I can. Due to decisions by Sega, the Saturn was in a bad position. The Sega CD and 32X failed to perform as well as the Genesis, so there was pressure on the Saturn to turn the tide. Poor marketing came into play too as the Saturn released in the West with zero advertising, and lastly, the Saturn didn't even have a brand new Sonic game or any other recognizable franchises to play on it. Basically, the system was doomed from the start. Things look pretty dire now, but trust me, they are going to get much, much worse. During the development of the game, two staff members die, the US localization team gets gutted, and due to it releasing at the end of the Saturn's life cycle and Sega's financial situation, Saga got a super low ass print run. Add all that up, and the fact that the game's source code might possibly be lost forever makes this a perfect storm of fuck. Low print run means fewer copies, which means high ass prices on the used game market. Lost source code ruins any chances of any future ports or re-releases, and Saturn emulation is really finicky so you can't even emulate the damn thing properly. Our only hope of experiencing Saga in the near future is by doing a full-on remake like they did for the original Panzer Dragoon a few years back. It won't be exactly the same as the old game, no remake ever will be, but even that is better than 80% of the gaming community never even getting a chance to experience this game at all. Well, that was depressing. Oh man, if there was ever a case for game preservation, it's this shit right here. Well, if there's any positive takeaway, it's at least Konami is actually doing something that doesn't involve fucking Pachinko for once. That and Suikoden is coming back. So, guess what that means?